Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Edit Place. Today, we're going to be talking about Motion VFX's new M Tracker 3D and their expansion packs. If you have no idea who Motion VFX are, they are a company that creates plugins for mostly Final Cut Pro. They have a couple Premiere After Effects templates, but primarily Final Cut is their main focus. And they are the absolute best plugins out there. They are the only reason that I still round trip from DaVinci Resolve into Final Cut Pro when I need to do heavy title stuff. Um, and let's talk about M Tracker and what makes it the best. This video isn't sponsored or anything, so I'm not being paid or anything to say any of this. Uh, these are my true and genuine thoughts on the product and more of kind of a basic tutorial of how to get it set up, as well as pointing out some of the advanced features that you can learn to do yourself. So first up, I have uh, Motion VFX's website pulled up here. Like I said, they make a ton of plugins that you can check out. Of course, links for everything will be in the description down below. But we are going to be primarily talking about the M Tracker 3D and the M Tracker 3D Essentials bundle, uh, which also I believe you can buy uh, individually. Yes, so you can get the emoji pack, you can get uh, captions, titles, pointers, all that stuff, or they kind of have it bundled together, which right now I think they're still doing their Valentine's Day sale as of today. Day. Now, once you have it purchased, um, if you've never installed a Motion VFX plugin before, it's first going to have you install M Installer. Uh, right here up at my toolbar, this little icon, M Installer, this is where all of your plugins uh, you can kind of access, access to. You can install them, you can repair them, uninstall, and you'll notice that you get two licenses for everything, so it is nice. You can have it on two different computers. And I really love this interface because half the reason I hate using plugins besides just their lack of features and efficiencies is uh, they can be really annoying to install. And so here you don't have to copy source files and go into whatever editing program and paste them into the proper folder. No, in here you just go to M installer, you click install and you're good to go. Also, if you're having glitches, so I recently had to do this with the M tracker, uh, a previous version was having some, was just doing some weird things with the titles. And so I can just click on these three little bars right here and hit reinstall, which is also repair. Uh, and it does the whole thing in just about a minute or so. So now let's open up Final Cut again. And it's going to place most of the options pretty much over here on the left hand side. You can see I have quite a few of their plugins, basically anything that starts with a lowercase m. Um, and we have a couple sample clips that we're going to uh, test out. So you can see for this shot here, which I used in my latest Samsung video, uh, wasn't in the actual final thing. This is just a sample text, but you can get the idea of what the product is doing. Same thing in the OnePlus video. Uh, kind of had track text pop up from this cable and then pan up, kind of go out of focus and onto the phone. Now, if you have the previous uh, one of their like callouts, you may notice some differences here. So callouts, the way this used to work is if I wanted to track this little uh, title thing in here, I would grab this, I'd grab my little tracker dot and I'd say like, okay, I want it to be tracked on that little dot right there and now I just say track a little box pops up uh, with that dot in it and it's going to track the overall positioning basically in 2d space of where that is positioned in the XY uh, position here and it's going to go through all the different keyframes I can go ahead and stop it and then of course it it's tracked to that point right but as we saw in the sample M tracker 3d actually takes um, your entire image gets all of tracking points and that helps kind of create this 3D space. So even we're not just zooming up and down, but we're actually doing a little bit of a parallax. Um, same thing with here, you know, it's kind of cameras going past it. And so we need to get all that tracking data first. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is select my clip and then make sure you have your effects panel turned on and under effects, you'll see M Tracker 3D, this guy right here. Drag that onto the clip. Now we see it over in the inspector and we're going to see this little box. I'm going to hit track. Now, depending of course on the length and complexity and whatever of your clip, it can take a while. And so for now, we just have to be patient and wait a few minutes. All right, and now that the tracking data is all there, we're going to hit copy track. 
And also, depending on what type of shot it is, you may need to change it the first time. Um, I didn't know to change this, and I kept getting an error, and I didn't know why. Right underneath the track and copy track is movement. Free is if something like this, where you're, uh, it's either free-handed or maybe like a gimbal or something. Um, but if it's a tripod shot where you're perfectly like just panning or just tilting, um, you can change it to tripod mode and see if that gives you better tracking data. So once we have copy track, now we can go over to our titles panel and I'm going to go to either M Tracker 3D or we can see the expansion pack bundle here um, with all of the different emojis title. It really doesn't matter. You can do um, any which of these the same way. So for example, maybe, maybe we want to do an emoji this time. Maybe... You know, I'm going to do the like button because you guys should hit the like button and like this video because it helps me out a bunch. So thanks. Uh, I'm going to lengthen that to the proper amount. And then I'm going to have this title selected and go back to the title settings. And I'm going to say paste track. So that's going to take all the tracking data from the clip and now paste it into the title. That way they can match up in the data. We see done, tracking data saved successfully. And now we just need to anchor the track to a point. And so I'm going to hit this little marker down here. And we can see our little XYZ axis uh, kind of icon right here. And I'm going to put it on that same dot we were talking about before. Now you can either, uh, you can see that the different angles change throughout. If you want to say ignore point orientation and just kind of have it face forward you can hold shift and now you can see that's going to face forward no matter what i'm going to go at a little bit of an angle i'm not going to hold shift i'm just going to point it right there now the nice thing is once you've selected a point you can change it afterwards so maybe if i want it in the middle of the water i can also place it right here you notice that it's kind of aimed down now so again i could have held shift and now it's going to aim right at the camera or no matter which one you do, you can always go into your inspector and you have all these different settings that you can then change. So I can go into content rotation and I can change the Y. Maybe we want to face it this way a little bit. Kind of have it be in the same relative perspective of like the water. And you can really adjust everything. You can go into the light color. So maybe it's more of a sunset. Um, so it's not a pure white, um, this clip happens to be, but you can change it to a different color depending on the cast. You can go in and turn on a light wrap, you can add blur, you can noise, and of course all these things that you can keyframe. And again, all these things you can actually import into motion and have way more customizing. I'm not a motion expert, hope to learn, uh, but for now I'm going to keep it relatively basic. And that's really it. If I just press play from here, you can see the little in animation. Now it kind of looks like the like button is bouncing on the water. Now you can choose some animation. So if you don't want the in and the out, the beginning and the end animation, or the animation through is the animation that happens during the, uh, while the clip is there. So maybe I don't want the bouncing, then I can turn off through and you can see that it kind of just stays stationary there. Now, of course, if this was a title, I could add one of those in, or maybe I'll remove the like button, throw in, I'll just grab any sort of title. Don't know if this will look good. And again, we don't have to retrack everything. I just paste the track data to here. And now I'm going to place it wherever I want. I'm gonna say ignore that I'm going to rotate it to make it look like it fits a little bit better. I think it needs to aim down more. And I'm going to change the position a bit. And you notice that the drop shadow behind it really can help sell it being attached to a surface. So make sure you mess around with that as well. You can even turn on reflection, especially since this is water. And the reason this popped up here is because the clip isn't actually full screen. Um, so I'd, normally I'd crop in or this would be a different size project so you wouldn't see that, but for now you're gonna see it.
If I turn on reflection, that's a little bit too much, so I'm going to turn it down just so slightly there. Boom. Without messing with it too much. It's got a weird little animation there, but you can see that it stays kind of attached to it, and that just looks super freaking cool in my opinion. Now you can do track stuff like this in a lot of programs like DaVinci Resolve, but as we were um, contemplating coming up with um, a cool title intro to do for the OnePlus video, we looked it up in Infusion. You basically have to customize everything. You have to custom build, and if you get good at it, you can get pretty efficient with it. But Motion VFX plugins make it incredibly fast and easy to use this stuff. I mean, when we just did a pre with my iPhone 12, we were able to see that the title pretty much worked, where we just filmed this quick little clip. Uh, we tracked the data. We pasted it through in a template, pasted the track, and we were able to see relatively what the title movement was going to look like. Now, of course, we could spend way longer and, again, go into motion or go wherever, change the uh, titles and shadings and really make it, like, perfectly match. But, again, I'm not a 3D artist, so I'm not an expert at that stuff. So that's how you use the M-Tracker 3D plugin. Again, there's a ton of assets and resources included in these bundles that you can check out, but they all work the relatively same way in terms of how to actually get it on your footage looking really good. So hopefully you guys like this video. If you did, don't forget to get subscribed. And uh, yeah, we'll be uploading a couple times a week here. So definitely come back. Uh, should be Wednesday for another Edit Place video. And links for everything will be in the description down below. Don't forget to try the coupon code to see if you can still get a percentage off of the plugin if you decide to purchase it. And thanks so much for watching, guys. See you in the next video.